In Intercalc 3D, analysis and design results are presented on the basis of load combinations. So we need to create load combinations that are populated with sets of load cases multiplied by factors. Let's start by taking a look at how we create those load cases. I'm on the Create tab, and I'm going to click the Load Cases button. In the Load Cases dialog, we can see that all models come pre-populated with what's called the default load case. Now, it may be possible in a simple model to just pile all of the loads into this one case and not worry about separating them. But for the purposes of this demo, we want to see how to create these load cases. So let's assume that we have a condition where we want a dead load, a snow load, and maybe a wind load case. So I want to add three new lines to this table. I'll enter three and click New Rows. And then in these label fields, they're freeform text. It does not like spaces, though. So if you want a space, use an underscore. I won't be terribly creative. I'll just call my dead load case dead. And note that the type is already set to dead, so there's no nothing that needs to be done on that one. Same with my snow load case. I'll just call it snow and use the drop down to tell the program that this thing that I've called snow really means that it's a snow load case. And then maybe I'll get a little more creative for my wind load case, and I'll call this wind from east. And then I'll set the type to wind. And now I can say OK. And I've created three new load cases. Now that would set me up well to be able to use the various tools that are available for adding node, uh, loads to nodes, members, shells, and so on, because now when I use any of those tools, I would be able to select the desired load case that I want the current load item to fall into. We'll save that for a different video, but the next thing that I want to show in this video is how we create load combinations. So I can come to Load Combinations here on the Create tab, and notice that the Load Combinations table also comes predefined with one load combination that's called Default. I don't usually do very much with this one. Again, it might be useful if you have a super simple model where you're not trying to run multiple load combinations. But what we can see is that this table offers some columns. So for each and every load combination that gets created, we can indicate whether or not that load combination is eligible for a P-delta analysis, whether it should be considered for steel design, whether it should be considered for concrete design, if it's eligible for checking of deflections against the total load deflection criteria, if it's eligible for checking deflections against the live load deflection criteria. And then over here on the right is a column that just indicates whether or not to even run that particular combination. So the most basic way of creating a load combination is with the Add button. When I click Add, it offers us the next available load combination label, which is freeform, and we can edit that. And then we could simply come in and specify factors. These checkboxes on the bottom are just controls that work the yes, no conditions that we saw in the columns in the background. And then we could say, OK. And now we've created one new load combination. Now, the Modify button allows us to just change an existing selected combo. Copy allows us to copy and then make some subtle modifications to create new ones. Delete, obviously, deletes the selected one like that. Then we come to the Unit Cases button. If I click this, notice that it creates a combination, one for each of the basic load cases that we created. Now, why might this be handy? Well, again, Intercalc 3D presents analysis and design results on the basis of combinations only. It doesn't do anything with those basic cases that we created. So if there's a need to, say, take a look at uh, reactions due to the dead load case, 
or if we wanted to look at deflections due to the snow load case, we actually have to make sure that we have a combination defined that represents 1.0 times dead or 1.0 times snow. So this unit cases button just takes care of that for us all in one shot. We also mentioned that that default combination uh, generally isn't very useful. So if we wanted to clean things up a little bit, we could select that one and then delete it. The real fun though comes with this generate standard button where if I click that button, we can select a design code and then review all of the possible load combinations that could apply to that code. We can select specific items or we could select all. And then we have the option to indicate that we do or don't want P-delta analysis to be performed on those combinations. Once, once we make our selections, then we can say OK. And here we can review and modify all of those load combinations that have been created for us automatically.